All right, okay. we've got Take Shelly care. coming. Shelly coming all the way from Wyoming, cold Wyoming. We are going to bring her up next and spotlight Shelly, and there she is. Hi, everybody. Um, Morning, Shelly. Here's my display of all my yarns that I've done. Um, I have recently changed the pricing on a lot of them because I want to clear them out. And I want to explain to you guys a little bit about what I'm planning for the next year. Um, I have this wonderful wool mill near me in Buffalo that produces some lovely yarns. This is a DK weight. Um, I believe she calls this one Jackson. And I want to get some of this to dye. And then there's this, which is a bamboo wool. And it is so soft and squishy. I just, I want more of this, lots more. But to do that, I need to get rid of some of my inventory. So let's go over some of the things that I have. I'm trying to put together some color groups. This is one that I've had since last, I developed this one last fall, um, or actually last winter, because I was sick and tired of, of, of the cold, which we get here. And I have, let's see, a few colors that would go really well with this. Um, the sock yarns, any of my sock yarns are $26. Um, so these two would be $26 a skein. And this is a merino, and this is $27. Throw that box. These two are sock yarns as well. This one is actually dyed with indigo. Um, so it's a really dark, true blue. Um, and then this one is called waterfall. And then this is the merino that would go really lovely with it. I know I've gone over several times the blue word Ballura yarn that I have. This I actually got from the wool mill. I bought everything that she had. She was doing an experiment with um, her wool and um, a wool that she had bought from Europe, I believe, that was an alpaca. And she combined the two and this is what came up. And it didn't go through the milling process very, very well. So um, she decided not to go with this. She had lots of it and I bought it and it's, it's still a lovely, lovely soft yarn. This one is Red Rocks and Turquoise Skies. Um, reminds me of Sedona is what it reminds me of. This one is Wildflower. And this one is Monet's Palette. And those are 27. These three, they're 50 gram skeins, so they're smaller. You would need more for a bigger project. Um, but you can make a hat with one of these. They're $12 a skein. Um, the goal is to get rid of all of these and move to a different kind of yarn. I want to start buying all my yarn locally um, for dyeing. These ones I did as part of an autumn colorway. Karen, you hearing me? 
Yep, you sound great. I'm just letting you go there. All these beautiful colors and that shawl you have on is mesmerizing. This, this was done on my loom and I was playing around a little bit with um, an overshot just to see what it looked like. Um, so it was a lot of fun and I had yarn that I needed to get out of my stash. So It's just beautiful. This has to be one of my favorites. This is called popsicle. This is what it we what we weave, weave up to. So you get all those colors in there. And I have these three colors that would go really, really well with it. Um, it's a worsted weight yarn. Um, these two, these two are sport weight. So they're a little bit thinner, but not by a lot. So these would really go well together. That would make a beautiful shawl. Um, or we have a scarf with it. Last summer, I decided I was going to do some summer colors, including Americana. And this is Stormy Skies. And this reminded me of a summer sky with clouds in it. And Americana would weave up like that. Isn't that beautiful? I just love the way that's that just out. awesome. I love that. So everything on this rack, everything is $12 per skein. This is 27 across here. From here to here, except for these three, these are all 26. This is all my sock yarn. These ones here are a US Merino that I bought and they were pre-skained, so it cost me a whole lot more to buy it. Um, it's a nice yarn, but it's not something I would ever do again. It's a really pricey way to do it. Um, these are 35. Um, these are all merino. These ones down here. And they are 27. And then all of these. are 22 right now. Again, the goal is to get everything sold so that I can start bringing some new stuff into it. Um, I have still lots of these bundles. There's five of them in there and there's a variety of colors. Basically it goes from really dark to a really light. And this is actually more, it, they sold it to me as a fingering, but I would call it more of a lace lace. And I have several different colors. And all of these are available on the website. And we've got your store linked right up on there. So can go directly to you. Right, and those are $30 right now. Um, let's see. If you want to switch over to my other camera, Mary, for me. So okay, can... will do. There we go. There you are. These are my gradient packs. Or maybe I should turn the sound off of that. Yep, got to turn one of them off. You're getting some echo. Is that better? Yes. Okay. 
So these are my gradient packs. It starts with a silver and goes to a turquoise. This one goes from a, a pecan brown to a magenta. Um, those are, how much are those right now? Got it written down somewhere. And Shelly, what's the total yardage in those gradient packs? Those are beautiful. Those well, gradient packs have, they have six, that can be right. It's 1,040 yards in each one of those packs. Oh, that would make a lovely project. Oh yeah, it would make a beautiful lace weight shawl. There's more than enough to, to make that happen. Um, these smaller bundles are 650 yards. Now my cards are all over the floor. And the you and you do all your hand dyeing, don't you? Yes, I do. I start out with something that's about that color. <laughs> and then I just start playing around with colors and having fun with it. Um, I did a lot of roving last summer and a lot of spinning. And I have, and if anybody has any ideas at all what to do, with the little bits and pieces. I've got a lot of it <laughs> and I anticipate I'm gonna have a lot more. You know, I think for us spinners and dyers, we all have lots of little bits. I just like to, to do a, a Sayori type of weaving where I use lots of different little bits and pieces. Right, that's what I was thinking about doing with it is making like a scarf that's got all the different colors in it. Anybody else has ideas on what to do with the bits and pieces chime in on Facebook because there's all kinds of great projects out there. Yeah, I could use all the help possible on that. Okay, so this is my prices. The five packs are 30. The six packs, which are like this one, that's 35. And that's 972 yards. And then the gradient packs, which are the eight packs, are 40. Let's see. Let's go over some of the jewelry that I've done recently. Because um, that's a wonderful project that I can do while I'm sitting in front of the TV in the evenings and we, we come up, we were talking one day and we were talking about doing the fiber artist market chain. That's part of the logo. And so I came up with this. See if I can get all the charms separated so you can see them. And I love that. I have to tell you that our logo was made by my son-in-law who is a full-time artist in Portland, Oregon, and Shelly interpreted it into this, and I just love it. Can you show us a kind of a close-up of that? And are the charms available separately? Um, I have them in a couple of, I, I could get them separately. Um, let me see if I can get this to, it wants to tangle. I have these in a couple of different formats. Um, there's this one. Let's try to get a close up if I can get a hold of it. And my shawl is getting in the way. There you yeah, go. That's, that's fabulous. And this one has a toggle. On it because I don't know about you, but it's becoming harder and harder for me to do the lobster claw connection. And this is so much easier to put together.
Well, most of the time, right? Most of the time. Unless you're on, on screen and then it becomes, oh my gosh. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I have that. Oh, that's perfect. And then I have, those are 25. And I have several of them. Some of them have blue and white beads. Some have red and white beads. Um, and then there's the green. You see the blue on that one. Now the difference between this green one and this blue one is every one of these charms is on a removable ring. So this is this is basically an earring, but you can use these as stitch markers. That's a great idea. I'd love those as stitch markers. Yeah, yeah. And you know, think about it. You've got it on a chain around your wrist and you can go to town and if you need one, you just take one off. And again, these are 25. So it's a great way. Those would make a great Valentine's gift for somebody on your Valentine list. I'm thinking of my granddaughter who doesn't spin, but she's a great knitter and she loves jewelry. And I'm, I'm seeing that in her future. Yeah, these are great. I, I love these. And I love these round little earrings that I found. Um, I've got some that are more of an oblong and I don't like them as nice. They're not as nice. So those are 25, that's the charm bracelet. And then I have some shawl pins. These are fun to do. I love these little flower beads. They're just so fun. And those shawl pins are great. I like that. And the shawl pins are 15. And then I've got a couple of different stitch marker sets. Um, these ones are seven stitch markers. And I did that because the hat kits that I was doing um, require seven stitch markers to do the hat. So why not sell a set of seven? So these are 15. And I had done a lot of these that I was going to do for our Christmas show, and then we never had the Christmas show. So I've got a lot of these sitting around. These are $10 for a set. That covers most of the jewelry. I also have earrings, but they're all hidden away. There's the llama earrings. Oh, cute. And those are $12. Here's some goats. Oh, those are perfect for our, our goat for our goat growers. Right? And then these are goats, but they have beads with them as well. So these are 15. They're a little longer of an earring. Um, But I wanted to have a couple of options because some people are not real wild about playing. And then I have the snowflake earring. Oh, how cute. Those goat ones will go great with our next, our next person who has mohair from her Angora goats. It's a perfect match. So that's the jewelry that I was having fun with. Um, I have some towels because like I, I showed earlier, I'm a weaver and when I do it, I do a lot of it and then I end up with lots of little scraps. 
And this is what I do with my scraps. I make little bags out of it. And I have two of these that I carry in my big bag. Um, one I use kind of like as a, a clutch purse with, you know, cash and wallet and whatever in it. And then the other one, I keep all my medication in. Helps me organize my bag better. I love how you've woven those. And then do you line the inside? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me open this up. And get all the tissue paper out of it. This is what the inside looks like. Nice, Perfect. that would help keep everything together. Yeah, it's, it's a nice solid bag, it's, it's well sewn. The only thing I haven't figured out is how to put a handle on it. I haven't mastered that part yet. <laughs> I bet we have somebody who can teach us that uh, in our great group of, of fiber folks. Now, what kind of loom do you weave on? It is a loom craft four shaft loom. Um, grab my phone here real quick. Get my fingers out of the way. Here's my loom. Oh, beautiful. I picked that up at the Estes Walmart a couple of years ago um, and have just been having a ball with it. Um, so I have these, these huck lace play, uh, towels that I did. This one is called, the pattern is called Gothic Cross. And I've got a bunch of colors of that because I put a 14 yard warp on my um, on my loom and just changed the colors after a couple of towels. So I've got lots of different colors of this. And then I had a friend whose daughter was having a little boy. So I made baby blankets. Oh, so pretty. These are so nice. This is a nice receiving blankets weight. Um, and they're 45. And they're fairly large. Perfect for a baby. In fact, I think I have a picture that shows the baby wrapped up in his blanket. And then I had a friend that I worked with who was having a baby girl, so I made these. And the funny thing is, is I was weaving this when she did her gender review. So I didn't have any idea that she was having a girl. But I did that one and I've got, I went pink and I went girly and it turned out she was having a girl and it was perfect. These ones are a little thicker, a little warmer. Um, they've got this really smooth texture on one side and on this side is really texturized. So I like the way this turned out. Those would be so nice and soft on a new baby. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and they're and they're washable, right? That smooth side, um, you won't have to worry about a baby becoming oversensitive because there was so much texture against the skin. Oh, well, see what else do I got here? I still have some shawl kits available. And these are $60 now. And there's 660 yards in there. Most of it is worst weight. I think there might be one that's uh, that's a sport weight. And you have your shawl pattern still up too to follow with those shawl kits. Yeah. Um, Lord, where did I put that? So 
So that's the shawl. And that's the pattern that I have on the website that goes with this kit. And I had leftovers. So this is more than enough. This kit is more than enough to make a nice size shawl. Beautiful rainbow colors. And then I have this blue kit. And again, these are $60. Well, let's see, what didn't I cover? Show you a few more of the merinos that I have. And there's 400 yards in each one of these skeins. And I wanted to show you what I had done with the roving that you sent me, Mary. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, that's the Cotswold. It died so beautifully. How do you like spinning that Cotswold? I haven't gotten to spinning it yet. I had I had some of that acrylic on my on my loom. And then I had gotten the merino from Judy. And I started spinning that and I just about got all my bobbins full. So I have to empty them out before I can get to this. Well, that certainly died up beautifully. It's a kind of a light gray and it just dies beautifully. I, I love the Cotswold. And then this is the other one. Oh, beautiful. Very yeah. nice. Got some purples and gray. And we've, got, we've got lots of them. And if anybody likes the the Cotswold and likes the long curls. We've got the fleeces and we have the roving. So give us a give us a look up. But boy, those colors came out so vibrant. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. I can't wait to do this one. This just the colors are gorgeous. And I was talking about all the spinning that I'd been doing. This is this is actually acrylic. And it's that roving that you can buy at Hobby Lobby. I was out of spinning material. So I picked it up and I started spinning it. And these two are done in a chain ply. And these are a regular two ply. That's great. So you just uh, you just pulled out the roving from their their uh, roving packs that they sell. Yeah. Yeah. And just started, you know, spinning it up and seeing what it'd do. And there's a different color that I got. Oh, pretty. Those are beautiful. Yeah. yeah it turned out really well. Um, but it's, a, it's kind of a pain to spin because it gets real staticky. Ah. For those who've never done it before, that's something you need to be aware of. Um, there's an, another one from that same bunch of acrylic. I bought a lot of it and I just, I'm trying desperately to get through it. Um, you know, I, people say, oh, acrylic, I don't want to use acrylic sometimes. But honestly, when I make baby blankets and baby things, having been a mom and a grandma, I use acrylic because, you know, you're busy and I want to just pop the stuff into the washer and be able to use it. Um, uh, not that I don't love a fine wool baby blanket, but for everyday use, I think these acrylics are just beautiful. And I love that you upcycled them into your own spinning. Those colors are stunning. These ones here are all Corydale. So this is the Corydale that I just bought. Um, I bought five pounds of this, so I've got a lot of dyeing yet to do. But then I had taken that 
and dyed these different colorways. Oh, pretty. And I was surprised, you know, this, this Corydale, it doesn't feel crazy soft. Um, and it really likes to spin thin. Um, but the yarn turned out so much squishier and softer than I thought it would. You know, we have Corydales and I, Corydales is one of my favorite. It, it is, um, of course the sheep vary across the herd, but it is really soft and squishy and it does great it for a woolen spin. It's beautiful. This is something that I bought from a vendor that was called English or Spinner's Delight. It's an English wool. Um, it's a lot like the Corydale, but it's just a little bit rougher. Um, but again, it was a really nice spin as well. It's been fun playing around with different fibers. I can't wait to get to the Corydale or the Calls 12. And I have a lot of that to, to process yet. Um, I got it all washed though. Oh, that's good. Now I just gotta, I gotta break it up and, and uh, comb it and get the last of the shorts and the debris out and, and it'll be ready to uh, turn into something wonderful. Well, and I see that Judy's here with her beautiful mohair too. So that's going to be another exciting thing to play with is mohair. I know. I know. I have some mohair locks that uh, Nick sent me, and I haven't, I haven't done anything with them yet because I'm, I'm just kind of waiting for the perfect project. Um, Excellent. Oh, those are pretty mohair locks. Yes, they are. And they, they require something beautiful to be done with them. Oh, yes, decided. they do. Tail spinning. Um, yeah, I've seen that, but I don't know anything about how to do tail spinning yet. So it's the perfect time to learn. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they always tell me. This is what I need to do is learn another thing. Well, that's the perfect lead up um, to Waterloo Mohair because she's going to have um, lots of locks to show us, I think. And I had, I had made a jacket out of this pattern. And I had some leftover. I still have quite a bit of leftover. Um, so I made a, a bag out of it, like a shopping bag. Isn't it great? Oh, nice. And it's lined. I think I I think we'll call it the Shelly Tartan. It's it's gorgeous. Um, and I got a lot of flack from the jacket because the the size of the material, because I was going to make a runa out of it. Um, the size of the material was only about 32 inches. And he wanted it, he absolutely had to have a jacket made out of it, which meant there was no matching the pattern. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I'll do a jacket. So I did, and it's a hoodie. And it had, you know, the hoodie and the side pockets and the zipper down the front. And it was, it was probably the most ambitious thing I had ever made, but it turned out really well considering the pattern didn't, didn't match up. Okay, well, Shelly is great little ramble through your studio and all your dyed products and your woven products. It always um, amazing to see how productive you are. I kind of get jealous because I just don't get as much done as you do. 